Hi, it's Dwyer, dwyercrime.blog, keepingitfree.blogspot.com. Today is Friday, July the 12th, 2019. Let's talk about Jeffrey Epstein. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now in this video, I'm not going to focus on the criminal allegations which are substantial against Jeffrey Epstein, who already is a convicted felon. Let me also add, too, that according to some reports, his legal team has already offered to plead guilty. In other words, here, you know what they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. Well, we've already had a proven fire involving this guy in a guilty plea about a decade ago. Let's just say that the fire seems to still be burning, right? But what really fascinates me about this case is that, and I'm going to have to pick my words carefully here, as you should whenever you talk about the rich and powerful. And I want people to keep that in mind as they leave comments in the comment section of this video. Right, there are parts of the Jeffrey Epstein story that don't make sense to me. Now, if you're from New York City, or if you're just aware of the New York City culture, you may have heard of the Dalton School. <clears throat> now, the Dalton School is a school where a lot of rich and powerful people send their kids. What I want you to do right here is to just close your eyes for a second and make a private guess to yourself as to what the yearly tuition is at an Ivy League school like Harvard or Yale. Right? Let's say you have a figure in your head as to what you believe the yearly tuition is at Harvard University. Right? Keep that figure to yourself. If you Google the Dalton School right now online, and the Dalton School is a kindergarten to 12th grade school, right? If you Google the Dalton School, you'll find out that the listed tuition is $51,350 a year. Right? $51,350 a year. Now you could imagine how many teachers in a competitive city like New York City, right, that is literally flooded with Ivy Leaguers, people who were at the top of their class, etc., in high school and college, right? You could just imagine how hard it is to get a teaching job at the Dalton School. Right? Understand, too, that when you apply to teach at schools like the Dalton School, they have stringent requirements. They're really expecting you to be elite. Right? To have the kind of resume, to have the kind of credentials that they can then sell to parents. Because if I'm a parent, and if I'm paying more than $50,000 to send my third grader to your school, I'm really expecting that third grader to have top-level teachers teach him or her. Well, one of the shocking things about Jeffrey Epstein <clears throat> is that Epstein, who's 66 today, right? Understand, in 1973, to 1976, he would have been in his very early 20s. One of the things that surprises me is that Jeffrey Epstein, without a college degree, right again, without a college degree, gets a teaching job at the Dalton School teaching physics and calculus. Folks, how is that possible? 
right? Jeffrey Epstein is 20 to 23 years old or something like that. And he somehow gets a very demanding teaching job at the Dalton School. No doubt teaching the older kids, right? Because I'm guessing my third grader uh, wouldn't be able to survive in a calculus class. Jeffrey Epstein likely is teaching 10th, 11th, 12th graders physics and calculus. And somehow he's able to do so at the Dalton School. That's really surprising to me. Understand, there's an article that came out uh, from the service Quartz, Q-U-A-R-T-Z, right, three days ago, July the 9th, 2019. I encourage people to read it. And in that article, they contend that Jeffrey Epstein right, came from a middle class background. His father worked for the Parks Department. He's not exactly John F. Kennedy Jr. in terms of connections. So it's a little surprising that he gets this career break so early in his career. If you know of the Dalton School's policy of hiring back in the early 1970s. And if you want to share that information with the public, I hope you do so in the comment section of this video. I'd be curious to find out how Jeffrey Epstein got that job. Right? I'm wondering if he submitted an application that disclosed the fact that he did not have a college degree at the time. Well, let's fast forward 10 years. Let's get to the early 1980s. Right by then, Jeffrey Epstein would be in his early 30s. Now again, understand, New York City is a very competitive place. Let me also take a moment here to just convey that I myself am libertarian. You know, I tend to lean libertarian in my political beliefs. I don't begrudge wealth at all, right? I want people to be as successful as possible. I don't believe that you need a college degree to be excellent at your craft, right? Nor do I believe in waiting a long time to be successful. If you have an idea that has a market for it, and customers are willing to pay you for your talents, get paid. Right? I'm not big on social hierarchy. But let's also recognize that social hierarchy exists. That you aren't going to get your foot in the door to even apply for some jobs unless you have certain credentials. I'm just surprised that an elite school like the Dalton School would have a young 20-year-old guy who doesn't have a college degree teaching calculus and physics, right? Something there doesn't meet the smell test to me. Maybe it's on the up and up. It just sounds odd to me, right? I encourage people to look deeper into that. So we get to the early 1980s. Now understand, in the intervening time, it's not like Jeffrey Epstein started Dell Computer, or Apple, or Microsoft, right? Jeffrey Epstein wasn't a household name to the people in New York City. But yet, by the early 80s, he's supposed to have been advising billionaires. Let's also remember the early 80s is before the huge run-up in the stock market during the latter part of the Reagan administration. Right? A billion dollars in the early 80s, very few people had that. Right? According to some reports, there were as few as 12 documented billionaires in the United States in the early 1980s. Now, of all the people out there from whom to get advice, 
we are to believe that some of these billionaires chose Jeffrey Epstein, who by then is in his early 30s. That just doesn't make sense to me. I'm surprised to hear that. In a city with the financial services sector that New York City has, you mean to tell me that some billionaires out of a universe of people eager to serve them would choose some guy in his early 30s. That seems odd to me. That just doesn't add up. Let me say too that there are some people who we know. Jeffrey Epstein actually was conducting business with had some kind of advisory relationship with, right? One of them apparently was the head of limited brands. That individual, who's a billionaire, uh, won't comment on Jeffrey Epstein now, right? I understand that. I respect people's confidentiality, especially when it comes to financial matters. Also, it must be extremely embarrassing to know that at one point you were doing business with someone who later in life would become a convicted felon. Right? So I respect that. But I'm just astonished, truly astonished, by the fact that by his early 30s, Jeffrey Epstein is apparently hanging around the billionaire set. That seems odd to me. So we get to the late 80s. We get to someone who's on record as paying Epstein, again, in the 1980s, $25,000 a month, right, for Epstein's advice. Now let's put that in perspective. $25,000 a month, today's a lot of money for a lot of people, right? Every four months, you're getting $100,000. Every year, if my math is right, that's $300,000. Right? Jeffrey Epstein apparently was getting that, according to Quartz, that July 9th article, from Steve Hoffenberg, a guy who was involved in billing. Right? So Hoffenberg is paying him $25,000 a month. Well, it turns out Hoffenberg at the time was running one of the biggest Ponzi schemes in American history. Right? It is estimated that he built his clients out of more than $450 million. Right? This is a guy who was paying Jeffrey Epstein $25,000 a month. This is a guy who would go on to spend almost 20 years in prison. Now Hoffenberg flatly says that he feels that the seed money used by Jeffrey Epstein was tainted. Right? That, that seed money was from ill-gotten gains. Right, that corners were cut to come up with the seed money. In other words, the seed money used by Jeffrey Epstein, according to Hoffenberg, wasn't completely legal. Now, Hoffenberg is shrewd. Right, he doesn't make a lot of direct accusations. So I believe to get the context of his comments, you should read the Quartz article on Jeffrey Epstein from July the 9th 2019. But here's what we know. Right? Jeffrey Epstein by the late 80s is an advisor. He's getting $25,000 a month from a guy who's running a Ponzi scheme. So I'm amazed that Jeffrey Epstein ends up with more than a billion dollars. Ends up with his private island understand the support group he has around him, right? His attorneys have literally been 
some of the biggest names in the United States. Right? Without naming the attorneys, let's just say that I've made videos here on criminal cases where I have cited some of the guys who apparently at one time or another represented Jeffrey Epstein. Understand, according to flight logs, Bill Clinton, former president of the United States, is supposed to have taken several plane rides on Jeffrey Epstein's private plane. A plane that Epstein a few days ago sold. A plane that the press dubbed the Lolita Express well before the current charges against him. So I expect the criminal case involving Jeffrey Epstein to absolutely blow up simply because too many people are involved and there's an earlier conviction and Epstein is 66 years old according to Wikipedia and no doubt wants to cut a deal so he's able to spend at least some of his remaining life outside of a penitentiary. Right, let me just say though that I believe we're just days away from some celebrity who realizes that he was in a bad situation being with some self-described billionaire where 15 and 16 year old girls are there and there are other famous and wealthy people there with knowledge of the celebrities attendance right some celebrity had to at some time some place at a Jeffrey Epstein event say I'm uncomfortable with this right I thought we were just here networking having a few beers on a private island I wasn't expecting 15 and 16 year old girls to be here doing anything other than serving drinks or something like that right I'm convinced there's a crowd out there who understands that certain things were happening at these parties that have led to Jeffrey Epstein's guilty plea right he's previously pled guilty right more than 10 years ago and that has led to Jeffrey Epstein's current proffer according to reports right also let's be real here too if these girls are 15 and 16 years old and if they're traveling to go to Jeffrey Epstein's private island or traveling to meet VIPs in different cities right there has to be parents someplace who remember their daughter hanging in Jeffrey Epstein's social circle who then saw their daughter with a lot of money who then realized that their child was getting money unexplained money from some third-party source also understand the prosecution has a high burden I believe they're gonna meet it right when a young woman says look I was on Jeffrey Epstein's island during this time period it should be provable right after all we know the former president of the United States' name is on some flight logs right understand the prosecution falls apart if someone says you know I spent this weekend with Jeffrey Epstein and his friends and then we come to find out that she was actually working at a Burger King or a Dunkin Donuts that weekend right the timeline has to match up I suspect the Southern District of New York a meticulous district a district that goes after very well financed Wall Street types I suspect that the Southern District of New York has already vetted the timeline and fully understands that they have a case that's a very strong one right I believe that attendees at Jeffrey Epstein events 
are going to come forward. People other than the women involved, right? Many of the women are coming forward saying, I was a victim at 15, right? I expect that we're just, I suspect that we're just days away from celebrities we know coming forward and saying, look, I was at this event. I didn't do anything untoward. I was on this island. I wanted to leave once I realized that this party involved underage girls, right? You'll have another group come forward who'll say, you know, I saw these young women at this Jeffrey Epstein party. I thought they were 18 and 19, not 14, 15, and 16, right? Understand the authorities, according to reports, already have seized evidence from Jeffrey Epstein's Manhattan Mansion, right? That includes, according to reports, photos of younger women and things like that. So the Southern District of New York might be able to determine who the women were in the photos, right? At least some of the women have already come forward Maybe some of the other women in the photos are their friends, right? So I believe Jeffrey Epstein is finished in the criminal case. But the, but the other story here isn't the criminal case. It's Epstein's background, right? How did he get the job at Dalton without a college degree? How was he in a position in his early 30s to have access to billionaires? What exactly was his role in the Hoffenberg Ponzi scheme? Understand, Hoffenberg pled guilty. So that shut down, right, the investigation. They got the big fish. Right? Was Jeffrey Epstein involved in Hoffenberg's Ponzi scheme as a smaller fish? Also, how exactly did Jeffrey Epstein get the seed money to start his business? Also, did his business make enough money to fund his lifestyle? I believe all of this is going to come tumbling out. I believe this case is much bigger than any of us envision, right? Both from a criminal standpoint, in terms of kids really being exploited, and from a financial standpoint, as to how this guy from a middle-class background somehow is teaching at the Dalton School and then is hobnobbing with billionaires and has some relationship to someone running a Ponzi scheme. Right? By the time he's in his late 30s. Let me hear from you. Let me also caution everyone. This is unlike other videos I've done because you're dealing with the rich and powerful here. Right? Not millions of dollars, possibly billions of dollars. Right? The people who attended Jeffrey Epstein events were very powerful and connected. So if you're going to leave comments, just keep that in mind. Understand that there may be people out there who have been hired to protect the reputations of the people involved. Right? If you're going to make a statement of information that you receive from an article, probably your safest way to do that is to simply quote the article. Leave a link in your comments. Give the readers an opportunity themselves to read the articles you've been reading and to research Jeffrey Epstein's past. This is one of the biggest cases I've come across, folks. Right? How this guy 
was able to continue his lifestyle after his conviction a decade ago is just beyond me. A lot of his wealth, a lot of his background just doesn't make sense to me. You have a lot of very skilled option traders right now in New York City. I don't understand how this guy distinguished himself to the point where he's getting even $25,000 a month for advice. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.